Welcome back to the breakfast. It's time for our second hot topic. And we want to talk about water, water poverty. What do you know about water poverty in Nigeria today? We're addressing that this morning. According to Water Aid, more than 60 million people in Nigeria do not have access to basic clean water supply. And according to UNICEF, two-thirds of the country's population lack access to portable water. We're talking 133 million persons. Well, I've been joined by Onye Dikachi Erete, a tech entrepreneur, data analyst, and the visionary behind Rector Cares Foundation, dedicated to providing clean and safe water to rural areas in Nigeria. Good morning to you, Onye Dikachi Erete. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you join us. Well, the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, uh, stated recently that access to clean drinking water had improved from 3.7% in 2016 to 13% in 2021, meaning that 21 million Nigerians have access to water uh, free from chemical and fissile elements. He said its dams produce 11.2 billion cubic waters, meters of water for irrigation, 900 million cubic meters for water supply, and 18 billion hydro generation however the unicef reports proves the glaring inadequacy of these numbers right yes talk to us about how big an issue water poverty is in nigeria today okay thanks for having me once again um water poverty is a big issue uh when we talk about water poverty we talk about poverty means lack so water poverty refers to the lack of access, access to clean water sources for basic human needs such as drinking, sanitation and hygiene. It is a critical issue in many communities in Nigeria and um, according to UNICEF, um, there are 26 million um, children who don't have access to clean water in Nigeria and according to Water Aid and w uh, World Health Organization, there are over 60 million Nigerians who lack access to drinking water and proper sanitation facilities. It is a big issue because water is life, clean water is a human right, and it is a very vital catalyst for the progress and prosperity of any community in Nigeria. So um, while we are addressing uh, water poverty in Nigeria, um, we need to understand that um, many communities in Nigeria don't have access to clean water. When we talk about water poverty, we're not talking about the big cities like Port Harcourt, Lagos, and Abuja, and Kano. Most of those cities, they have access to clean and safe water, although some don't have, especially like in Lagos, in the island like Lakey, some still don't have access to clean water. But by the way, um, water poverty is a big issue, and we need to find ways to address this issue as soon as possible. As a tech entrepreneur, how is tech being deployed to solve this problem? Um, there are many ways um, you could solve um, water poverty through tech. Um, I partnered with um, Empower the Jusen Foundation and Ground Force, where we provided um, solar powered borehole. Um, actually, I started this whole initiative in 2020 during the pandemic, uh, where I partnered with uh, Doing Solo Gunye, and we provided over 5,000 indigents in Lambasa community, Etiosa local government area in Lagos during the lockdown, and we won an award with Union Bank, uh, Union Bank Rice Challenge, which encouraged us to do more, and we invested the money they gave us to into. Um, the tech of providing uh, water, which is the solar powered borehole. And since then, we've, um, with the help of Power the Jusen Foundation and Ground Force and their technology as well, we have provided um, solar powered borehole in Ochicha Google community, Ikeju local government area, Imo State, and Obofia community, Ozit and Ben, the local government area, and County. And we have one we are about to kickstart next week. Uh, with the tech, uh, we we with solar power boreholes, we can provide this clean water 24 hours without the need of electricity. Like you can see, the the fuel price has gone on, go up, and 
if we are using uh, the fuel to power this water, uh, it will be very expensive for us. But solar help us to provide this clean water 24 hours. Thank you. Well, so the numbers are alarming. There's no, I mean, it's alarming. And even for those of us in the city whom you said have clean water, you know that Nigerians provide water for themselves. When we were exactly. younger, I don't know how young you are, how old you are, but when I was younger, growing up in secondary school, I went to a public secondary school. And I remember when, during our break time, we just go to the tap, turn it on, drink clean water. But it, it's not the case today. Um, is your agency partnering with government or is government partnering with your agency or any agency that you know in seeking an end to water poverty in this country? Um, like you said, um, I also experienced uh, a fair share of experience where we, uh, we get clean water from our homes without providing it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, most of this, the problem is the maintenance culture. We have a very bad maintenance culture and that's why most people are providing their own clean water by themselves by drilling boreholes in their homes or anywhere mm -hmm. they need it. But um, it's, it's, it's a big issue because many organizations done and um, the government, everybody needs to come together to encourage and eradicate water poverty. I've not really partnered with any government um, agency. I've only partnered with Power the Jason Foundation and Grand Force and also uh, Medic Initiative. We've used our technology to, to provide solar powered borehole. The last one we did in Imo State, where we provided a solar power borehole, we connected underground pipes to the healthcare center. We don't have water um, availability. And also to the school, we don't, ha we don't have water availability through underground pipes and they receive water 24 hours. And we encourage organizations in Nigeria to come in, come together to eradicate this water poverty because it is a big issue. I've been to different communities where they don't have clean water and they go to streams to fetch this water. And I believe that when we, with all hands on deck, we can eradicate water poverty in Nigeria. Okay, talk to us more about the communities that you've been to um, and which part of Nigeria would you say is worse hit? Is it the northern part, the southeastern part, the southwest, or the south south? In, um, thank you for your question. In Nigeria, most, most, if not all, communities are vulnerable to water poverty. These communities often lack uh, proper infrastructure and uh, resources. And if they are, they have one, there's a, there's the maintenance culture is really a big thing because once they build the water. Uh, uh, infrastructure for them without the, a good maintenance, culture, and sustainability, the, the water projects will go down. And with uh, and all these uh, issues lead to they, they are very vulnerable to waterborne diseases such as cholera, diarrhea, and other health issues. I won't say there's a particular place in Nigeria, whether it's the north, south, west, that that have this more than others but I with our statistics most of these communities in the north southwest all have these issues of water poverty and we all need to come together the stakeholders organizations who have to implement this in their corporate social responsibility to find a way to end water poverty in nigeria um I'm glad that you're a tech entrepreneur. Perhaps you can also help us understand why the water board is not functional, apart from corruption, of course. And okay. I understand that one state, particularly in the East, had to, I think it was Anambra State, shut down the water board. You're not giving water. You're sitting here idling away and receiving salaries at the end of the month. Can you tell us? As a tech engineer, what may have been the problem? Why did, who dropped the ball and how did it get dropped? Why did we stop having waters? I mean water, portable water from our taps. Every home used um, to have it. Every compound back yeah. then used to have What happened to the water board? Um, I believe um, they, 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 they need to grow with the technology, especially the maintenance culture, and they need to improve in the technology especially um, the distribution 
of these waters. As I believe that with their new technologies, like with my partners, um, Ground Force, we have um, advanced um, technologies we can, which, which can help this water board to the next level. Secondly, the government needs to also improve and invest in wastewater treatment. There are other ways we can provide this clean water to individuals, wastewater treatment and advanced water purification. Uh, we, most of this water we use in our homes, we can also recycle these waters and, and use them again. And I believe uh, this water board, everybody needs to come together and also sh should showcase um, new technologies to them. And uh, currently, as I'm talking to you, I have a state who, wants, who have an issue of flooding that affected their water board and they contacted uh, Rector Cares Foundation to see how we can get back um, the water board functional and we are on it at the moment. And I believe that other states can also contact us or contact any professionals out there who can get this back together because people who don't have money to provide what um, boreholes for themselves, they they depend on this water board, water um, board, water board, water um, um, government bodies to provide water. And if they can't provide water, they have to go to homes who have um, boreholes or they have to go to the stream to fetch water, which is very bad. Well, the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamo, we, I just gave you uh, his quote there, which is said to be different from the figure released by UNICEF, being totally not reconciling not reconciling what does that say what kind of picture does that paint about the future of clean water available water in this country if the minister is not seeming to have um, an accurate picture of the situation on ground um, i believe um, with his with his data um, he has made his own um, inquiries on how um, the water have been distributed and also he, um, trying to counter the, the data of the World Health Organization. It's possible that um, more people now get clean water from his data, but we still need to look at um, the communities, the rural areas. Maybe he's talking about the cities like Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, which they may be, they've improved drastically. Um, but if he can also um, lend hand into the rural areas and undeserved communities, I believe the, the numbers will increase as well. So if we're taking our data maybe next year about people who have um, access to clean water, we also need to look into rural areas and communities who have uh, and undeserved communities who have who, who this issue affects more than the people in the city. Thank you. Or could it be that UNICEF or Water Aid do not have their facts right about a situation here in the country? Um, Is that um, a possibility? It, it, Is it a possibility yeah, yeah. that they are probably exaggerating the problems we have? It's possible, but um, we, we, they, they still need to be like uh, a new data, um, a new data collection to also fact check all this. And also Rector Cares Foundation, we also have a survey going on on our website where we can also try to fact check all these um, numbers as well. Uh, for us, Rector Cares Foundation, we've provided over 35,000 people clean, uh, access to clean water. So with that data, we can also um, help increase these numbers. I know 60 million uh, people who don't have access to um, clean water is a big number. It but, is a big um, number. We can also find ways to fact check this information and data as well. Well, thank you so much, uh, Onye Dikachi Erete, for your time this morning. And I do hope that this matter will be well addressed because figures, accuracy or not, we can see for ourselves that Nigeria needs support in this regard. I'm not talking about UNICEF or water aid. I'm talking about the government fixing this water problem for ourselves, you know, so that Nigerians can begin to have clean water 
at every nook and corner as we did back in the days when we were younger the good old days when you turn your tap and there's water when we didn't have boreholes when we didn't have pure water <laughs> and all of that <laughs> so we hope to go back to those days when things were better and we want to see nigerian government addressing this and not looking for help from outsiders and it's good to have uh, nigerian entrepreneurs such as yourself you know doing stuff that you're doing good things you're doing kudos to you thank you very much thank you so much onye dikachi erete is a tech entrepreneur data analyst um and the visionary behind Rector Cares Foundation, dedicated to providing clean and safe water to rural areas in Nigeria. Well, that's our package today on The Breakfast. But before I go, I leave you with our quote of the day. Science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. That's according to Arthur Schlesinger. I am Maureen Menonwezigui. Many thanks for your time. Do join us tomorrow for another episode of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning.